Ms. Franklin's weekly press conference. We will start with an opening statement from Coach, and then our first question will go to Greg Pickle. Coach? Like always, I want to thank everybody for getting on here and, and covering Penn State football. We appreciate it. Um, I guess just a, a couple things um, you know, before I get into you know, reviewing our past game briefly, I, I would like to just send a message out uh, to Brandon Short um, and his family and pass along our love and support and thoughts and prayers um, for him and his family. Um, getting into the summary of our, our last game against, against Ball State, I guess the things that really kind of jump out from a positive uh, as the offensive ball security and defensive turnovers have been big so far uh, this year. We want, we want that to continue. We won the field position battle. We won the explosive play battle. Um, and there was great examples of defensive pursuit. Um, and I'm a big believer. And if you want to play great defense, that's, that's, a, that's a critical ingredient. And we're doing that at a pretty high level right now. Opportunities for growth. We lost the, the penalty battle. Um, specifically, we got to eliminate the pre and post snap penalties. We got to see what we're hitting consistently, uh, keep our head up and, and see what we're hitting to keep our guys uh, safe and healthy and keep the, the people we're hitting safe and healthy as well. And I think we got to do a little bit more, uh, we got to do a little better job and more consistent uh, job of, of protecting our quarterback. Too many hits uh, on our quarterback. Um, so that, that's kind of where we are with that. When you kind of talk about specific to Auburn and getting into these guys, you know, obviously we're excited about the opportunity. Uh, got a lot of respect for Auburn University history, traditions. Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool place. And, um, you know, obviously I got some familiarity with them as well from my time in that conference. <clears throat> I've known Coach Harson for a number of years. Uh, got a lot of respect for him and what he's been able to do in his career. Uh, you're talking about 16 returning starters on this club, um, you know, talented club, kind of what you expect to see when you turn on an SEC football team. Uh, Mike Bobo, I've known for a long time, got a lot of respect for Mike as a coach and as a man, uh, does a really good job. Um, some of their personnel that jumps out to us is the running back Tank Bigsby, explosive and fast. Uh, makes a bunch of plays for them. Uh, Jarquez Hunter, another running back, then wide receiver, uh, Shedrick Jackson, and then obviously their quarterback, Bo Nix, does a lot of things well. He's athletic. He can extend plays. He's accurate. I've been impressed with him. And then on defense, obviously you guys know I have some history with Derek Mason. Uh, Derek was one of the most respected defensive coordinators in all of college football. Um, you know, you talk about guys that, that we – you know, been impressed with on tape is Owen Popo, young man who we uh, recruited out of high school. Um, he really jumps off the tape and flashes to you. Uh, the other linebackers are Kobe McLean, and then defensive end Derek Hall, number 29, and corner number 23, Roger McCreary. Those are the guys that jump out and not only that, back it up uh, from a statistical standpoint. And then on special teams, Burt Watts, um, you know, Demetrius Ro uh, Robertson. Uh, the punt returner and the kick returner, Donovan Kaufman, they've rotated a number of guys there, but it seems like they're the two main guys, um, you know, that, that they'll be, they'll be leaning heavily on come Saturday night. So uh, again, appreciate the opportunity and look forward to take questions. Greg Pickle, Blue White Illustrated, Tyler Donahue, you're on deck. Good afternoon, James. How you doing? Good, Greg. How are you, man? I'm doing well. Thank you. How did they go last week getting recruits back in the stadium for the first time since 2019 and how important will it be this week to have a bunch of guys in town and be able to showcase a lot of the stuff you didn't get to last year yeah I thought it was it was great and I thought it was important and needed I think you guys know I've said this before um, this is a special place but it is something that you have to come and see for yourself I think that's that's a really important piece to all this not only for the seniors that are making decisions now, but um, the seniors that are making decisions now, they weren't able to go anywhere as juniors. So um, it's it's important for these seniors that are finalizing their decisions. It's important for the juniors, juniors that are, uh, you know, 
really starting to get hot and heavy in this process and either making decisions or, or starting to kind of narrow it down in their mind, uh, you know, where they're looking at. So uh, really important. And then obviously, as you know, uh, for a long time, you know, this, this whiteout game uh, year in and year out uh, goes a long ways towards shaping our futures. You think about how many great players that have come to Penn State that talk about the whiteout game having a, a big significant impact uh, in their recruiting process and in their decision. So, you know, getting as many of the, the top players nationally as, here as possible as well as well as getting some of the uh, uh, getting all of the regional players here on campus, we think is really important. Tyler Donahue, Lions 247, and then we'll go to Audrey Snyder. Hey, James, good afternoon. Doing well. Hey, Tyler, how are you? Um, Eric Wilson, can you give us a little bit of a progress report on him through two games? Played a lot as a first team for you last week. And, and Juice Scruggs, after the game, noted that he's had some pretty significant physical changes since he enrolled in May. Can you give us some, some details there at all? Could you could you elaborate a little bit yeah. more on what you're talking so about? So Juice said that he that Eric Wilson has shed some significant weight uh, since he arrived. He didn't want to give me anything too firm there, but it was something I had not yet heard. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about that. There's been other guys that that you know has jumped out kind of dramatically. Um, I'm not sure about what Juice specifically is is referencing. Um, you know, it's a little bit like uh, you know a little bit like you know. With my wife, I'm not. I'm not going to necessarily talk about things that I shouldn't be talking about. Um, but you know, Eric has done a nice job. Uh, he really has. He is big. He is strong. He's physical. You're talking about six foot four, three hundred and seven pound uh, guy. I think he probably came in a little bit heavier than that uh, when he first got here. But once he's kind of adjusted to our program and the amount of conditioning and, and lifting that we do in season, uh, I think he's in a really good place right now. You know, obviously played uh, rotation. He rotated in in, in, in the first game uh, and then played, I think, the majority of the second half. And then, you know, last week played played a much bigger role. Um, you know, right now we have him uh, as our starting left guard. Um, but, but you know, we also think we'll rotate some other guys in there. And I think he's playing well and getting comfortable and getting adjusted to the speed, to the size of the game uh, at this level, and and we've been impressed with him. He's also a guy, as you can imagine, you know, he learns well, he picks up things quickly. I think he's just going to continue to get better week in and week out. Audrey Snyder, the Athletic, and then Rich hey, Garcella. How you doing? Good, Audrey. How are you? Well, thank you. Um, two quick ones, if I may. Uh, first, obviously, USC came open. Um, your name has been mentioned among candidates. I don't want to take away, you know, your focus from this, but um, just wanted to ask if you have any thoughts on that. And then second, I have a recruiting question for you. Well, I'll, I'll let you ask the second question because you only get one question. I'm going to choose which one I want to answer. Okay. Well, then maybe somebody will follow up for me. Yeah, no, I'm oh, kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I, as you guys know, I can't stand in any form of distraction. Um, so I'll discuss this today with the leadership council so that we can make sure that all of our energy and uh, our, all of our energy is on our preparation for Auburn. Uh, and that's how, that's how we'll handle it. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to the leadership council today about it. Awesome. And my recruiting question, um, you guys had a chance to get Kenny back here um, within the past year. How important was that for you guys bringing in somebody that you had and then were able to get back? Yeah, you know, Kenny, Kenny's Kenny been a, a big part of our program for a long time, and, and we lost him and, uh, for a couple of years and you know, had an opportunity to bring him back. And, and I think a couple of things, I think it was important for us to bring somebody back that kind of understands our culture and, and how we do things. But I also think it was probably important for Kenny to, to leave and go experience some different things. And, you know, I think Kenny loved his time here and appreciated his time here, but I also think – uh, as, as he is, you know, gotten older personally and professionally. So maybe things that he values, um, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, became magnified in his life, you know, and, um, it just was a win-win. We were able to get a guy back that I got a ton of respect for that I think is extremely valuable and, and does a great job for us, um, and makes sense, uh, in this region. Um, but I also, you know, I think, I think, Kenny's come back and, and, and really appreciates 
uh, how we operate and how we go about our business. I think it's been a win for both. I, I, I hope Kenny feels the same way. I think he does. Um, and, um, and, you know, we're happy to have him. Hope he stays for a long time with us. Rich Scarsoa, Redding Eagle, and then Donnie Collins. Good afternoon, James. How are you? Hey, Rich. How are you? I was going to ask before you started talking if, if Chris Peterson's got a question uh, policy. You're allowed to ask three questions, two questions. I'll make sure we're all on the same page. Just Perfect. one? Thank you. Thanks, Rich. All right. Um, when you made the change at coordinator, you mentioned um, – Wanting the offense to be more explosive is one of the reasons for the change. Where do you think you are at this point and how much room do you have to grow? Yeah, you know, I, I don't think I'm, I'm ever going to be satisfied with where we're at on offense, defense and, and special teams. Um, you know, I think we're always going to be striving for, for more. Um, but I, I think we've shown flashes. Um, I think, you know, we can be more consistent there. I think we can be more explosive. Um, there's also some plays that, that we've missed. Um, you know, whether it's, whether it's missed a read or overthrew a ball a little bit or, um, you know, maybe a different call. Um, you know, it's a, it's a combination of factors. It's execution. It, it's all of it. But, you know, I think, you know, for kind of where we're at in the season, um, if we just continue to, you know, get better and, and continue to take strides, uh, in, in really every area, you know, running the ball, protection, um, explosive, um, you know, explosive plays. Uh, I think we'll like where we're at. We're going to have to do that on, on Saturday. Um, but I think, I think we're making progress, but I think there are signs. There's some signs of some really big plays that we've made. There's some signs of plays that we sh should have made that we got to execute. Um, and then I think there's ways that, you know, that we're working on every week during the game planning session that, that Mike does a great job of. And so does the rest of our staff of, of finding ways to do it. I think there's also the factor in it, Rich, too, is, is depending on who you're playing and what their style is. You know, last week, you know, it, it was pretty obvious that they felt like they were going to try to, um, you know, keep everything in front of them uh, and not give up the big play um, to keep the game close. And with as much success that they've had, um, you know, on their win streak was keep the game close. And they've they've won a bunch of ball games and, and hopefully they can find a way to, to win the game at the end. Um, it didn't necessarily play out that way, but I, I think that was clearly their plan going into the game is play soft, keep everything in front of them. Donnie Collins, Times Tribune, then Nubias Wilborn. Good afternoon, James. Good, how are you? Real good. Uh, what, what's the biggest reason you, you've been able to kind of protect the ball on offense first two games, and I guess even dating back to, to late last season, while still being able to take some sh shots at the big plays and, and, and some risks on offense? Yeah, I, I guess what I would say, Donnie, first of all, is, you know, I, I think that's that's been who we've been for, you know, the majority of, of my time here and the majority of my time as a head coach, we've, we've done a pretty good job uh, of protecting the football. You have to do that. You know, if you want to be successful, obviously we've done it at a very high level so far this season. Um, it's, it's a combination of us emphasizing it uh, like we always do. Um, it's, it's explaining it in meetings in a way that the players can relate to and understand the importance and the impact of it. And at the end of the day, it's, it's about the players going out and, and executing the plan and, and also executing, um, you know, the fundamentals that, that are coached on, on a consistent basis. So we got to keep it up. Um, we got to do a great job of that today. That'll be a major emphasis in, in today's practice. Um, but I think it's it's been a big part of our early success, and we need to keep it going. Goodbye. So, born in Pittsburgh Post Gazette, then John Sauber. Well, I guess we got the rumor stuff out of the way, so I could uh, go from there. Um, Hi, how Dubai. difficult can it be? By the way, James, thanks for this as always. Um, how difficult can it be facing someone that you have such close familiarity with when it comes to Derek Mason now um, as defensive coordinator, being somebody you worked with for years? Well, I've never worked with with Derek, but I but I know Derek. Um, I know Derek obviously very well. Um, you know, not only personally but also professionally. Um, I, I think probably the biggest challenge uh, for us, uh, you know, with these guys is the way their first two games have played out. 
um, and the type of people they have played, um, you know, it's, it's, it makes it a little bit challenging on tape, um, you know, to, to evaluate the tape. And again, with a new head coach and new coordinators, um, are we watching Boise State film? Are we watching Vanderbilt film? Um, are we watching Georgia film, Colorado State film, um, South Carolina film? You know, uh, w- what do you watch to get enough um, examples of you know, formations of situational football and scenarios that you want to get covered? Uh, you just don't you just don't have a whole lot to work with. Um, you know, when when you when you get into a game and it's a blowout early on, those late game reps are not as as important in your breakdown because I don't know if they are as as realistic uh, of information as you would get um, under a different scenario. So you know that that's probably the biggest challenge. I wouldn't say it's necessary the familiarity with with me and Derek. John Subber, uh, Center Daily Times, and Elton Hayes. Hey, James. Uh, hey, John. You guys faced two different kind of defenses sort of for the first two weeks with Wisconsin seemingly playing a lot of man and blitzing a lot and Ball State backing off a little bit more. How does that help prepare a new offense, and how do you sort of use that going into this matchup against Auburn? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Uh, two very different styles. Um, you know, obviously one on the road in a hostile environment and one at home. Uh, you know, we were able to score some more points, started really fast uh, last week against Ball State. You know, game one started a little bit slower uh, on the road. Um, so what you'd like to do is kind of a marriage of the two, right? You'd like to you know, gain uh, both of those experiences um, and, and be able to learn from them and grow from them and evolve and, you know, start to kind of formulate your identity and, and Mike getting a good feel for what we do well on offense and specifically what Sean does well. Sean getting a feel for Mike and how Mike uh, calls the game and how he wants to attack the defense, um, kind of the rhythm of how we go about things. It's me and Mike working together and our communication on the headsets um, in between plays, in between series. It's the communication with the offensive staff. It's, it's all of it. And every game and every practice you go through that um, you get more of a comfort level. I I get more of a comfort level with Mike. It's Mike. It's more of a comfort level with me. Sean's involved in that as well. Um, You know, it's all of it. You know, it's 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 all those things that that factor in and how we operate um, so you can get to a point where Mike is comfortable, and knows exactly what a Tuesday's like around here and exactly what a Wednesday's like around here. Uh, I think, you know, those things are those things are, are really valuable. And then, you know, obviously, you know, Mike is pushed back and challenged on some things as well. And Anthony Poindexter's pushed back and challenged on some things to think about that maybe they've done it all other places that should we consider adding it to, to our formula uh, or do we stick with our formula the, the way we've been doing it? So you do that every year. You're tweaking and uh, when you when you get people inside the program and they're able to see how you operate and then say, hey, this is something that we did at you know, my previous institution that I thought was good and it may fit here and, and how. Um, so it, all, all those things I think have, have been really important and um, – you know, I think every day, every practice, every game, uh, we get a better feel for each other, um, you know, as a staff. Elton Hayes, CNHI, Pennsylvania, then Ben right, Jones. James, hope you're well this afternoon. You as well. I'd like to ask you about Keandre Lambert-Smith. Um, early into his second year of the program, how he's kind of progressed and the development that in the um, growth you've seen from him. Yeah, I'm really pleased with Keandre. Um, you know, I think you guys have seen some flashes already early in the season. I think that will continue to grow. Um, again, the way we were able to distribute the ball to 10 different receivers in the first half, uh, that makes things really difficult as, as a defensive coordinator. But um, I think Keandre is going to have, you know, you're going to see his role continue to grow as the year goes on. I think he's going to have a great career here. I think he's got a very bright future. Um, Keandre, like a lot of aggressive, competitive uh, young men, uh, he wants to be, uh, if, you're, if your scale is A through Z, he wants to be at Z right now. He wants to be at Z yesterday. 
And it doesn't necessarily work like that. The most important thing for me and what I want him to recognize is how much progress he's already made and how much he's developing weekly um, and, and building confidence in himself and earning trust of his teammates and his coaches. Uh, I'm super proud of him. I think he's going to play extremely well Saturday night, and I think you'll you'll see that confidence just continue to grow and the experience uh, that he's gaining, um, you know, I think you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be very pleased with the development of him as the year goes on. Ben Jones, StateCollege.com, then Mark Wiganrich. Hey, how's it going? hey Ben, no good. Complaints. How are you? You said a couple weeks ago that as a player, ben, ben, I don't like that color on you very much. You, you, the blue tends to bring out your eyes mm. so much more. Yeah, well, you'll get over it. Um, <laughs> I appreciate uh, the the word driven advice, though. Um, you're, um, you're welcome. You mentioned as a play caller that there's four to six plays a game that can differentiate a guy and that Mike had statistically done a good job of that over the course of his career. How do you quantify what those plays are and and what did you see out of him that led you to believe that? And how do you think he's done so far in that department this year? Well, I I think first of all, it's, it's the overall analytics and, you know, I think it's, it should never be based on one year, right? And that's that's as a program, that's as an offensive coordinator, defense coordinator, special teams coordinator. It should never be about one game. It should never be about one year. It should be about you know what has he done over his career as a as a play caller, um, and his his credentials. Um, you know, as a play caller in, in many different conferences and many different circumstances is, is really strong. His resume is as good as, as there is. I feel the same way about Brent Pry. Um, you know, I think those two guys working together and going against each other every single day at practice, I think is, uh, has been, has been really important. And I, I think part of it too, Ben, is it's not always, it's not always the exciting play that goes for 70 yards and scores a touchdown. Um, it's the first down that somebody, you know, may not notice. Um, it's, it's running the ball on third down, uh, because we got into a field, uh, a field zone that, you know, I told Mike that you got two downs here, uh, to, to get the first down and he runs the ball on third down, which would have put us in a manageable fourth down situation or like happened Saturday, Sean ends up running for a first down on it. Um, it's, it's, it's those type of calls that, that go a long way. It's the discussion that we have on the headset uh, against Wisconsin about on third down, you know, with them having one timeout left, do you, do you throw the ball here and pick up, pick up the first down? Um, or do you run the ball and force them to burn the last time out? And based on how the day had gone, how our defense was going, uh, and how they were playing and where they were at from a timeout perspective, um, you know, Mike doing what's best for the program right there and making that call, um, you know, obviously, you know, the, those are, those are the calls that, you know, maybe go unnoticed or unseen um that are those four to six calls a game so you know i've been impressed um so far you know he's a creative guy he's a fun guy um yeah i think he's been really impressed with the staff that we've had here it's kind of unusual circumstance you hire a coordinator and he comes in by himself he doesn't bring anybody with him and i think that that's meshed and gelled really well you know with with taylor and jay Wan and Ty and Trout, you know, they're working extremely well together. Um, so I've been pleased, and we just got to keep chipping away at it. And I do think, like I mentioned earlier, with an answer is, you know, him getting more comfortable with how we operate here, him getting more comfortable with our personnel and our strengths and our weaknesses, and and then you know how do we want to attack our opponents? Um, you know, he's learning every day. I'm learning every day. Sean Clifford's learning every day, and. And um, the more days and the more hours we spend together like that and practices the games, I think the better we'll all be. Mark Wilkenrich, SI.com, then Corey Geiger. Hi, James. Hey, Mark. Good. How Thanks. are you, man? Appreciate it. Um, you just mentioned recruiting on Saturday a little bit. How many recruits, players, families, that sort of thing, do you expect to entertain on Saturday? The, the, the whiteouts are usually somewhere around 300. And, um, that's, you got to remember that's the recruit plus their guests. 
Um, some of their guests are, are teammates that are also recruits. Some of them are just, you know, moms, dads, brothers, sisters, uh, or high school teammates or whatever it may be. Um, but we're usually full. You know, we're fortunate here having a 107,000 seat stadium. Our student section is bigger than most. Our, our, um, allotment of recruiting tickets is bigger than most. So that helps for games like this because you hate to turn people away. But this is a game where we typically have to turn recruits away. This is a game where we typically have to turn high school coaches away just because the demand way far outweighs, uh, you know, the supply. Corey Gugger, DK Pittsburgh Sports, the micros. Hi, James. This series hey, with Auburn was announced in 2016. Uh, is there anything you can share about how a, ser- a, a non-conference series comes about? Do you tell Sandy, I'd like to play these guys? Does she tell you, I'd like to play these guys? Or is, is it a collaboration? How does that work? Yeah, it's a collaboration. Uh, I think the Big Ten plays a factor in, in these decisions as well. I think the athletic director plays uh, obviously a, a factor in it and, and the head coach and you're trying to make the best decisions uh, for your program, for your organization. Uh, you're looking at what are your crossover games that year. Uh, if you have the Big Ten schedule at that point, what are your crossover games? You know, who are you playing from the West that year from a strength and ske- strength of schedule standpoint? What are your other out-of-conference games like? Um, you know, all those things kind of, you know, need to be factored in, not just the number of home and away games. You you have to look at it all. Um, so it's a, it's a conversation and it's an overall philosophy between the head football coach, the athletic director, and then also, and then also, obviously I think the big 10, you know, plays a role in it. Um, I'm a big fan of the neutral site games. I think um, those are things that, that, that make a lot of sense when you can play a, a neutral site game rather than you know committing to a two-game series, playing a neutral site game um, where you have an opportunity um, for both teams um, to treat it in some ways like a home contest. Uh, in terms of the gate, um, you know, and, and those types of things. Uh, and then it allows you maybe to get into a region of the country, um, you know, where, where your fan base may enjoy it as well and see a different venue. So uh, I think that's something to, to consider moving forward as well. Mike Gross, LNP News, and then Joe Giuliano. Good afternoon, James. How are you? Good, Mike. How are you, buddy? I'm good, thanks. Um, you talk a lot about being able to run the ball when everybody in the stadium knows that you're going to run it. It seemed like that was a, a, a thing that you worked on a lot in the second half last week after you, after you got a lead. I don't know. Maybe you don't agree with that, but uh, how do you feel like you did in that regard? And what are the sort of things that you look at to, to gauge how well you did in that regard? Yeah, I think, I think we're coming along in that area. Um, yeah, I think I think it really helps as a, as a play caller when you know you can you know call you know one of your favorite run plays um, based on that game plan that week and and feel confident that you're going to pick up at least three yards. You know, there's a lot of value in that. Um, I think I think we're making strides there. Um, I think it's also obviously you know whether it's short yardage situations, um, you know, being able to being able to kind of dictate your will on your opponent, whether it's short yardage, whether it's four minute, whether it's low red zone, uh, those things are extremely valuable, especially in the low red zone because your, your playbook shrinks. You just, you just don't have as much field to work with. The high lows are not the same Uh, down there. The vertical stretches obviously are eliminated down there. So it, so it changes some things. Um, But I think we're making progress. And and to me, that's kind of got to be our approach is, you know, we just got to kind of keep chipping away at all these things. We want to get a little bit better on third down. We want to get a little bit better on first down. We want to get a little bit better in the strike zone or, or scoring zone uh, or red zone or low red zone or whatever it may be. Uh, defensively, same type of things. You know, how can we better be, be better on first and second down so we get more third and longs? Um, you know, uh, on special teams, you know, we're doing a great job of 
punting. I think we're number one in the country in, in, in punting, um, but we want to be number one in the country in net punting. You know, um, it's it's all those types of things. And although I think we're doing some really good things on offense, defense, and special teams, there's still a lot of opportunity for growth. And um, you know, um, I'm excited for us to take another step with that today in practice and. Hopefully we do that each day this week, and and that leads to us executing at a higher level on Saturday. Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer, then Dave Melandra. Hi, James. Hey, Joe. Um, You mentioned uh, penalties in your opening remarks. Uh, You guys have had 13 in two games, and nine of them have been for 10 yards or more. Um, Do you feel that uh, maybe a lack of focus might be one of the reasons, and how do you uh, take? what steps do you take to uh, reduce the number? Yeah, no, I, I would not describe it the, the way you did. Um, you know, obviously, I think you guys have heard me talk about before about you know, the most important stats in, in, in football. Uh, we want to be a disciplined football team, and I think we can be a disciplined football team. Um, but I do think there's a, there's a couple penalties that, that we need to get cleaned up, um, especially the pre-snap and, and post-snap penalties. They're the, they're the ones that – um, I think, you know, you can't tolerate as, as a head coach. There's going to be some penalties that happen throughout a game uh, based on going against really good players um, that are going to happen, aggressive penalties, you know, during a game. Um, but, but, but you can't tolerate the pre- and, and, and post-snap penalties. So that, that's, that's really kind of what we're talking about. But, no, I think um, there's a lot of different areas that you would look at our team when you talk about uh, focus and you talk about discipline and I think I think you know, I would describe us as as that type of team uh, but this is an area that we can improve we need to you know I don't know if we're gonna we're gonna eliminate them all but there's there's two or three a game um, that we need to eliminate that that could be significant and could be the difference between extending a drive or not two more questions we'll go with Dave Melandra and Nitty Lions Wire and finish off with John Petitionock Hey, Coach, got a quick one for you. This whiteout game has had an impact for you guys over the years. For those who have never experienced a whiteout, can you just about the impact that it has on you guys? And also for those fans who are coming to the game for the first time seeing the whiteout, what's your message to them? Well, a couple things. I think, first of all, if, if you're a, a sports fan, you, you're, you need to have a whiteout you know, on your bucket list. It's something that I think everybody should experience. Um, you know, for the fans that are coming for the first time, um, I, I hope you enjoy it. I've been doing this for a long time. And, um, you know, at pretty much every major conference, uh, including the NFL, and this this is as good as it gets. Um, you know, I think the, the impact and the electricity that it it, that it provides for our town and for our state and for the hotels and restaurants and bars and local economy and uh, for our for our students um, and and for our campus and community. I think it's it's special. I really do. When you talk about uh, putting us in position for our future in recruiting um, and and showing you know student athletes the type of environment that they're going to be able to play in in one of the most beautiful settings in, in college football, you know, when it comes to the, the town, the campus and the community, all those things, all those things matter. Um, and we're going to need this place rock. And I think, you know, one of the things that was great on Saturday is how many of our fans were in the stadium early, how many of the student, the student section was almost full early. I remember two years ago um, at the whiteout, the stadium was almost full um, you know, maybe 90,000 an hour before kickoff. And, and to me, you know, though, that's what we need. We need each week when the visiting team comes into the stadium that the stadium is already packed and rocking in warm up, uh, just with, and with the anticipation of the game. So, uh, we need that on Saturday. Uh, we need every seat, uh, filled. Um, you know, don't, don't allow if you're not using your tickets because, because you're not comfortable coming to the game for whatever reason that may be, you know, make sure that somebody else is, uh, you know, I am, I am, uh, willing, um, to, uh, to buy uh, throat lozenges um, on Sunday uh, for the entire fan base, if that means that we have the most challenging environment uh, in all of sports. Um, Chris, what's what's like what's one of the most common throat lozenger uh, you know companies? 
Halls. Yeah. So we're, I'm willing to buy halls uh, for everybody that loses their voice on, on Saturday. Um, halls, uh, we'd appreciate your support with this as well. Um, but uh, I think, I think you know, that's, that's what we're looking for come Saturday night. We, we want this place rocking. I got a ton of respect for Auburn. I got a ton of respect for the SEC. Uh, I want these fans um, and this staff and, and these coaches to go back to the SEC and say, you know, I know we, we love our football in the SEC, but, you know, what, what they do up there at Penn State is special. And I don't know if I've ever seen anything like it. I want them to have that type of experience and that type of impression uh, of our fan base um, and of our university uh, and our crowd. And I, and I also want to make sure – which I know we always do that, that we treat our guests, uh, with, with unbelievable respect, uh, and be great hosts. The last question to John petition off the Penn state football letter. Hey, good afternoon, James. How are you doing today? Good John. You? Well, after Saturday's win, Arnold Ebicady, he celebrated with some fans and he had a critical blocked field going a sack in the opener. What about Arnold's approach and maybe his personality has allowed him to fit in so well, so early. Yeah, he's just he's a, he's an awesome young man. He's very appreciative of of the experience that he's having at Penn State. He's always got a huge smile on his face. Um, he's a mature young man. He's great with his teammates, um, but he also has got a really good way with the staff. You know, he can kind of he understands kind of how to live in both those worlds and 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 do it in a way that's very relatable and and uh, respected. And, um, and he's obviously a, a very, very talented football player that's got a bright future. And, you know, uh, he came here as a good football player, but I also think, um, you know, he has really developed in the time that he's been on campus as well in the weight room, uh, when it comes to body composition and nutrition and, um, you know, how he's practicing and, and, and then obviously his playmaking ability on Saturday. Um, I, I've been really pleased. I think John Scott and Dion Barnes have done a really good job with him as well. He's very coachable, um, you know. And I know Coach Pry and the defensive staff just have a ton of trust in him uh, and how he plays. So, um, you know, we love him. He's been a great pickup. He was, you know, we had Victory Monday meal last night at, at Pollock, and um, he was he was there with my wife and kids, you know, laughing and telling stories and. And, uh, you know, we're, we're very happy to have them.